Oh. Barbara from Politecnico of Milan. So this is uh, the last uh, uh, presentation. You can, uh, in a few minutes, uh, you will be free to, to run uh, to Vatican uh, on uh, to have it, uh, to have dinner if you would prefer. Okay, thank you, Barbara. So, uh, thank you, and thank you all for being uh, still here <laughs> at this time. I also want to thank uh, Martina Bussettini, all the ISPRA and the WMO for giving me the opportunity to be here today and present you the work that uh, we are uh, doing at the Politecnico di Milano concerning the uh, applications of remote uh, sensing uh, to uh, river systems. I would like to start with a, a consideration concerning the availability of, uh, of data for uh, the analysis of environmental systems and uh, in particular river system. Uh, during, the last, uh, during the last decade, um, we have pro provided, we have uh, collected a large amount of, uh, of environmental data uh, that um, are now ready to be analyzed and uh, uh, used for the comprehension and, uh, of uh, environmental systems and so to see if uh, our um, conceptual models or theories uh, are, uh, can be uh, validated or not. But the most part of this data mainly uh, comes from uh, um, local scale, uh, local scale sensors, uh, and uh, um, recently uh, a new uh, challenge is uh, bring growth from uh, the um, advances in uh, remote sensing uh, sensor uh, and satellite sensor in particular. Um, what I mean. Um, uh, the, um, the power of uh, satellite remote sensing uh, is, uh, even if um, it, uh, it, it can uh, load to a, a lower uh, sp spatial resolution of, of the information, I mean uh, uh, satellite information usually have a, a lower spatial resolution compared to uh, uh, local aerial photos or drones or, or local uh, uh, sensor methodologies. Even uh, uh, so, the spatial resolution is lower. Um, the uh, data from satellites of uh, higher temporal frequency. Uh, I mean, uh, for example, Cosmos SkyMed uh, can allow almost a continuous observation of uh, uh, Earth systems. And uh, uh, most important for uh, uh, river uh, systems is uh, the spatial coverage of this data. So we are able today to pass, to move from uh, the observation of local, uh, um, of uh, the local sites to the observation of uh, a global scale. I mean, of, of the observation of what is happening at the catchment scale. Uh, that is the scale at which uh, basic processes uh, um, um, originate, uh, are, uh, so are, um, starts. Um, we are already, uh, we already uh, heard about the Copernicus program today, so uh, what I'm going to present you are some examples of the application of uh, um, the Sentinels uh, from the Copernicus program. Um, in for the uh, analysis of hydromorphology uh, of rivers. Um, the, the important uh, things that uh, these uh, programs is uh, um, allowing us is that this, this uh, um, program is providing a very high resolution uh, products, images, and with high temporal frequency. And uh, most important, these data are uh, freely available for everyone. So we can go on the web portal and download them uh, now. Uh, the example I'm showing you mainly concerns Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2. 
Sentinel-1 uh, um, is a, a carry, carries on um, synthetic aperture radar uh, that operates on the uh, C-band, so with a spatial resolution of 20 meters. And uh, the temporal coverage uh, of uh, the constellation of two satellites is of, say, six days for a same area in the same wavy conditions. Uh, one, uh, one of the most important characteristics of the SAR images is that uh, these are coherent. That means that the same object uh, on two different images is very well detected by the SAR um, uh, instrument. That means that uh, we are able to detect uh, changes for a same object uh, in, uh, in the order of centimeter. So these uh, uh, images are um, very useful for uh, understanding of uh, land deformation, for example. Sentinel-2 uh, is carrying on uh, an optical uh, instrument uh, that uh, works with uh, 13 uh, uh, bands. Uh, four of them are at 10 meters of resolution. And uh, the present uh, temporal uh, um, um, coverage of uh, this uh, satellite is uh, 12 days, but it will be of five, six days with the launch uh, of the second satellite and uh, the beginning of the next year. Uh, so, uh, this is, I am um, doing, uh, I'm presenting uh, four examples of application of this data. To, uh, for the extraction of hydromorphological indicators. This is the easiest one. I mean, uh, there are um, uh, several uh, applications for, uh, from uh, aerial images, but also ex other satellites' images for the extraction of river geomorphic features, such as uh, river channels, bare sediments, uh, or a vegetated island. So, uh, mm, the application of uh, these uh, methodologies uh, mm, to um, the Sentinel-2 images are simply a methodological issue and uh, uh, the gain will be uh, the, the mapping of uh, river geomorphic features at the basin scale and for um, uh, several uh, high frequency uh, in time. Uh, another exam example concerns the um, extraction of uh, three-dimension char characters of riparian vegetation. Uh, there are um, the, some uh, authors that uh, already proved that we can extract uh, uh, three-dimension characters of vegetation completely from remote sensing. Uh, for instance, uh, by the use of high density LIDAR. But they also proved that uh, we can uh, uh, obtain a similar results if we combine low uh, density LIDAR, that means lower, uh, ex less expensive um, uh, LIDAR, to uh, orthophotos, to ph photogrammetric process of orthophotos. And so we can, uh, in that way, we can obtain a canopy height model to uh, analyze uh, uh, riparian vegetation characters. So, again, this is opening opportunities to test uh, the potentiality of Sentinel-2 uh, for uh, this, kind of, uh, 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 this kind of information. Another example that maybe is the most interesting for you today uh, is the estimation of water discharge from remote sensing uh, uh, data. Uh, there are uh, some authors, in particular Gleason and Smith, uh, that have published these uh, results on PNAS that uh, um, uh, proved that the, the classic uh, um, um, exponent and coefficient that uh, comes from a classic uh, uh, attestation hydraulic, uh, hydraulic geometry uh, equations are very well related. And this is uh, also uh, true if we estimate these uh, parameters uh, from uh, an hydrodynamic model uh, that uh, is uh, calibrated with in-situ measuration and uh, um, 
also if we use uh, to derive this data from uh, Landsat thematic mapper images that have a 30 meters resolution, spatial resolution. So uh, they, from this finding, they concluded that uh, they derived at, uh, at, at a many uh, station I, um, hydraulic geometry that I'm not displaying you today. If you want, you can uh, uh, go and read the paper. But the, the important message is that they proved that we can derive um, water discharge uh, completely from remote sensing. I mean, uh, the, the, uh, the graph, the figure on the right is showing that uh, uh, the discharge estimated from uh, misuration of uh, uh, river width from multiple stations uh, is very consistent to uh, the water discharge uh, obtained from gauging station. And so this is also opening opportunities for the application of Sentinel-2 because it has a better resol spatial resolution compared to Landsat thematic mapper. Another example that concerns uh, water uh, discharge um, uh, regards the, uh, concerns the use of uh, radar altimetry. Um, this, um, this work is still in, uh, in this testing phase. I refer here to the SWOT mission. That is uh, um, a program that will be launched uh, in uh, 2012 and uh, 20 by the NASA, but is uh, now in this its, uh, testing phase. So uh, they are um, uh, trying to obtain to uh, me measure um, um, hydraulic parameters such as water elevation, slope, and width to derive uh, estimation of river bathymetry, roughness, and uh, discharge for rivers that are larger than 100 meters. And uh, the results they are um, they have at the moment are quite uh, encouraging. So let's see what will happen. Uh, this also may open some opportunities to apply Sentinel-3 uh, radar altimetry. The only problem is that for Sentinel-3, the spatial resolution is uh, uh, of uh, 300 meters, so we are speaking uh, about very, very large uh, rivers. And the last example concerns the work that we are doing at the Politecnico di Milano together with the Durham University. Uh, it concerns the uh, estimation of and the mapping of grain size along river by com com integrating Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 data. Uh, so we are um, comparing uh, different sites with different uh, grain size, granulometry. And uh, uh, the results that we are um, producing, so this is a very, uh, these are very first uh, preliminary results and uh, the research is continuing on this theme, are uh, quite encouraging. So it seems that for, at least for Sentinel-2 images, uh, the uh, spectral uh, value of uh, the different uh, uh, zones of the different images here uh, is um, the spectral values concern only the gravel bar. Um, are, uh, so these values are discriminating quite well uh, the different locations. And what about Sentinel-1? Uh, uh, the, the, the test of uh, Sentinel-1 data is in progress because it needs a, a very hard work of image processing. We also have to work uh, with uh, several images, but uh, the principle is uh, that uh, uh, SAR images uh, are uh, sensitive to uh, surface uh, roughness and structure. So maybe uh, it could uh, allow us uh, to discriminate uh, the coarser fraction of the sediment. During this test, uh, we also uh, we, we, we found uh, uh, an interesting thing. That means um, the, um, the image in the, in the middle is a single SAR image. The image in the left 
is an interferogram of two different uh, SAR images. And if you, uh, if you, see, if you look with, uh, we pay attention uh, to these images, you can, I mean, you can follow, it, seem, it seems you can follow the river pattern along the interferogram. And in particular, you can see a more defined zone on the interferogram that if you look at the image on the right, on the Google Earth image, it seems to correspond to the zones where there are sediments. So uh, why? Uh, because the sediments uh, are coherent uh, between two dates. The interferogram is between two dates, uh, the 7 and uh, 11 October of uh, this year. So. Um, sediments are coherent and appear coherent on the interferogram. Uh, on the other hand, uh, all the zones around the river, so the zones that is occupied by vegetation, is not coherent in the interferogram, is not uh, uh, defined. So we can say uh, to some extent that it seems that the interferometric coherence may help us to discriminate between vegetation and sediment along the riverside. Uh, and maybe it may open um, application also for uh, the habitat mapping uh, with uh, the SAR. Um, the last thing, the last thing, uh, we are also uh, at the Politecnico developing a low cost, uh, smart and quality sensor for the validation and the calibration of Sentinel data. Uh, sorry, can you start the video? Is the, the image top left? So uh, that means we are using drones, uh, techniques like um, the structure for motion photogrammetry, I'm sorry. The, <laughs> and also, it's not a problem. And also, uh, uh, we are developing uh, uh, apps and uh, using uh, images from the so-called uh, citizen science to uh, validate uh, um, and uh, calibrate uh, Sentinel data. So to conclude, uh, Sentinel-1 is not a problem. To conclude, Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2, so the, the Copernicus program is bringing us uh, an un unprecedented opportunities to analyze and survey research system in terms of uh, several uh, hydromorphological indicators. Uh, that means that we can move uh, from uh, the local scale to uh, the analysis of the global scale, that for river means uh, river basin scale, uh, that is the scale at which processes uh, originate. Uh, the, these data, uh, the data from the sat mm, sentinels are uh, quality, of quality, of high repeat frequency and are for free. Uh, so allowing us to move from uh, the simple mapping of rivers and river feature to the monitoring. And uh, finally, all that needs uh, 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 research and uh, uh, the research also needs to move uh, through um, application for a river uh, management uh, uh, and so on. So thanks for your attention.